Tony Peterson is going to be joining me here soon. We're going to be hunting for the next seven days out here. We've got a wall tent. And I need to try to figure out how to get that set up here. Step one is just figuring out how to get out of the box. How's the drive? Come on, buddy. Uh, Chicago traffic? Dude, it feels so weird driving through Chicago to go deer hunting. <laughs> what, what are we doing here, man? Well, we're going camping? Well, we're at least gonna have something we could camp in if we want. We got a big wall tent. I've never set one of these up though, so. Based off how we did this summer, I'm sure we can figure it out. <laughs> are there any ratchet straps on this sucker? <laughs> Say the darkest hour is right before the, the rut is here. And Tony and I have seven days to put ourselves in the right position to arrow a buck on the farm. All my work this year has led up to this. It's time to make a plan. If just generic, if I had to give you 30 seconds and I put a gun to your head and I said, tell me the very most important thing to do to kill a buck during the rut right now, you would say? Time on stand. And if I said, you've got 25 <laughs> more seconds to answer the question, <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> Time on stand in, in cover, yeah. in good cover with some kind of terrain feature that's working in your favor. It's the most hit or miss, scatter fire, here and there kind of situation. I mean, it can go from zero to 60 in seconds and you just have to somehow stay in a ready state to be able to take advantage of it yep tony's right on a small property like the back 40 cover and terrain dictate a lot hell they dictate just about everything we have to focus our time in the few key spots that deer most want to be those especially and then just grind it out from the first moment i laid eyes on the honey hole I knew it was that kind of spot. The kind of spot I'd want to spend a whole lot of November days in. Last year, we saw proof of that when the wide eight came charging out of the nearby timber before he met my arrow. So now, this week, I'm betting on the honey hole one more time. It's the rut, man. It's November 7th. Some people say it's the very best day of the year I'm for white hunting. I'm one of those people. This is my favorite day. Man. All right, I like to win. Yeah, me too. Should we uh, me too. get ready? Hit the woods. I call dibs on little droppy. <laughs> I don't care which buck I shoot, Mark. <laughs> I don't care either. Any parting words of wisdom? Nope. All right. Need to get into a tree. I think that's beautiful. That's probably the best advice right there. Very, very excited. It was awesome being out here with my dad and seeing the change in deer activity, but now it's gonna be interesting to see what November looks like. I gotta believe it's gonna be better than last year. I got one. So, uh, I'm sitting there on the edge of the swamp. I think deer are gonna cruise this edge and bucks looking for does. Got my wind blowing back into the field behind me. It's a good run setup, we just gotta Hunk it out, wait it out. It just feels like a perfect rut morning. We're set up in sort of a sandbag spot. Mark and I hung this ladder stand this summer, and I didn't want to go into this farm, not really knowing it, to hang in the stand in the dark. So we thought we'd, we'd set up here, see what we could see. Memory. 
here's the spot. The last time I sat here is when I killed the white ape. Left it just over my shoulder back in that field. It's pretty cool looking at it now and seeing that this field looks quite a bit different than it did 12 months ago. slow just saw the, those five does and they were in the food plot across the way tonight I've got a wind that works for the other side of the food plot we're here in between fields five and six just outside the honey hole uh, when I was here with my dad last month we sat in the box blind that I have over here and that first night a little droppy and one other potential shooter came out from the swamp and headed this way into this food plot. If nothing else, I can see some of the best food we have, close to some of the best bedding, and that's gonna allow me to learn some new stuff. It was up over 70 degrees today, which is not ideal at all for this time of year, but I don't let it get me too down. I used to get really bummed out about warm spells this time of year. And one time I was out in Iowa hunting and had a couple days like this and I decided to go home. And while I was gone, three of my friends there in Iowa all killed great big bucks during those hot days. So I will never ever make that mistake again. It's still a rut. Anything's possible this time of year, whether it's 75 or 25. So. Especially this last hour and a half of daylight. It's cooling down. If there's deer around, I'll be moving, so I'm not gonna let this get me too bummed out. And I'm expecting any time now that someone's gonna pop out and some does come out. It could be just the ticket. It's 
That was nuts. It was, it was dead the whole <laughs> night until the last half hour probably. And then out, kind of right in between where you and I were sitting, a group of five does came popping out over the hill. And then a doe came out behind us out of the honey hole. And then probably 10 minutes before dark, here comes a doe running out with the food plant. And then behind you, you could just see a bigger body and it pulled it by nose and He's a little droppy, but he looks really nice. How big do you think he is? I mean, 130 type of buck, maybe? Yeah. Um, and I think he's a three-year-old. I don't think he's like super mature, but old enough. These does in front of us got jumpy, whether it was the wind or something, but they never fully committed. Uh -huh. And uh, he stood there forever and then just kept chasing the does. And, so I've sat that spot now three times, not that exact spot, two times in the box while I'm with Dad. Mm -hmm. And now tonight, and two out of three times, so I've seen him. He's living there. Yeah, he's, he's right in there somewhere. Yeah. So. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's encouraging. Yeah. What do you think you want to do tomorrow? I'm going to go right back there. Yeah. That's a kill spot. That spot I was at this morning is like a hub. That spot tonight, I look at this and I go, there, there, there. It's just so natural. Mm -hmm. And the way that, I, I feel so much better the way that you saw some does, I saw some does. It's like, yeah, there's deer living here. There are deer here. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get loaded up and get ready for another early morning. Yeah, buddy.
Alright, it's almost 10 a.m. and uh, I think I'm gonna pack up, head back to camp and grab some climbing sticks in my saddle and reposition for the afternoon near where we were yesterday. Decent morning, so three little bucks and four does, I think, so. Could have been worse. So Tony and I are on a little bit different schedules right now. Because of where I sat this morning, I came out early while he stayed in late. And now I'm going in early. He's going in later because he already has a spot set up. But I want to go and hang a new set in the same zone as I was in last night. But I need to move because of the wind. It was shifting too far east. So I'm going to slip about 100 yards maybe uh, west of where I sat last night. So hopefully I can observe that same food plot system, but be downwind of where they all come out. There's more does there than anywhere else I've seen yet. And this time of year, especially on a small property like this, rather than overthink it and try to get too crazy with things, if you just focus on where the does, that's usually your best bet. That's where they are right now. So that's where I need to be. time to stop messing around on the edges. I'm going right into the honey hole. If any bucks cruise through this area to check all these does I've been seeing, they're likely to pass right through here. Time on stand and the best cover where the most does are. That's the plan. Warning number three.
hot weather days have been pretty frustrating, but the first couple hours I think we got a chance. So I can see down into this native prairie bedding and up to the plots. There's been a good number of bucks hitting this area. I've got two cameras, one inside the bedding, one on the food. It's one of our most consistent zones of activity, so. Is that 
Is that a little dropper it's coming off? Something. Yeah, it's like a little it. mini drop tie. <laughs> we'll drop you. This buck's got a drop tie on the bottom. Yeah, I see that. some bedded deer out of this nice little interior grassy cedar field here on the side hill leading into a swamp. Uh, really nice little bedding area. You know, that's, if it's easy for you to see, then have a pot. I couldn't find it. Ripped up cedar over here. Let's see another. Ripped up cedar. A bunch of scraping going on underneath here. You can see a licking branch right there. What is there? There he is. <laughs> Nice. There he is. Look at that thing. That's awesome. This dude, the way he was living here was in real trouble, huh? <laughs> he was definitely a frequent Good shot too. Frequent visitor. God, that's cool, man. That's freaking sweet, dude. It seems really fitting that this is where I killed him too because it was when I got to the honey hole, when I got to this patch that I started calling the honey hole, that I thought this, when I walked it for the very first time before we purchased it, got to this point, I was like, ooh, this is cool. The satyrs, the grasses, I knew the swamp was in here. This one I thought, this could be the place. And over here on this, they get all that nasty, gnarly cover. The swamp, the cedars. I mean, holy smokes. Once again, getting excited. Man, I am tickled. <laughs> <laughs> 